Thank you, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Western Pennsylvania, all of Pennsylvania. Thank you. You have been great fans. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have to say to the Board of Trustees of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, to John Banker and his staff, to the Commissioner of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabu, to all of the Hall of Famers who have come back today, to my fellow enshrinees, and to the writers who have voted us into the Hall of Fame. I proudly and humbly say thank you very much. It was 14 years on that list before I could stand here today and wear this gold jacket to tell you thank you and how much I love and appreciate how you've supported me over these years. 14 years. But if patience is a virtue, then the virtual, virtuous part of that patience is in finding the positives of having to wait so long. The man who introduced me today, John Stallworth, he and I battled day in and day out. We competed for that limited number of passes that we knew that we were going to throw every game on Sunday. And we wanted it desperately. I could not be standing here if it were not for that competitive spirit that I learned from John Stallworth for his trust and his faith in me as a wide receiver. If we're going to call someone the best, and if you think of me as being the best and I'm number one, well, I think we have to broaden that thinking. It has to be a 1A and a 1AA. I'm not saying who's 1A, but John and I are 1A and 1AA, side by side. I could not be here without the overwhelming support of Dan Rooney and Chuck Noll. I know that last year when Dan Rooney stood here at this podium, as proud as he was to be following in his father's footsteps, who also stood here and accepted the award of being inducted into the Hall of Fame, that he felt that maybe standing here might take something away from a player going into the Hall of Fame. Dan Rooney deserves to be here for his great contribution to this game, regardless of what player does or does not go into the Hall of Fame. He is a cornerstone of the National Football League and keeps this league running in the right direction. So I'm happy that he is standing here behind me, sitting behind me to share in this day to know I fully appreciate all that he has done. And to Chuck Noll for his unwavering support and saying that I belong here on the steps of Canton and giving me the opportunity to play this football game. The virtuous part of having this patience also means that the day I was selected to the Hall of Fame this last January couldn't have been a better day because it would have been the 100th anniversary of the birth of Art Rooney Sr., the founder of this football team. If 14 years had not passed, then I would not be here today with the great patience and support and love of my wife, Charina. And being able to stand here in front of you and having my two sons, Schaefer and Braxton, who are five and three years old, to be here and be a part of this afternoon. I am glad 14 years passed so I could have this love and this family share in this moment with me. But the beginnings, but the beginnings of all of this come from my mother and father and instilling me a faith in God. 
that if I walk that path and paid attention to the details of life and faith and my family, everything would be okay. Because I'm the youngest of three boys, whom my mother named Lynn because she wanted to have a girl. <laughs> now, you thought that was tough. You try leaving football practice with a pair of tights named Lynn at an all-boys Catholic high school. You'll find yourself learning a few moves. I want to thank my mother because when I was in junior high school, I received a scholarship to go to Sarah High School in San Mateo, California, and I did not want to go to this all-boys Catholic high school. My mother made me go. She made me go, and the foundation of that education and what she instilled in my life have brought me here today. I want to thank my father, Willie Swan. And when I first started playing football against my Miller brother, Calvin, who's also here, Calvin is a much better athlete. And my father said, well, I'm not sure, Lynn, if you're going to be so good. So when he took me out to buy me the football shoes, I wanted the, you know, the really expensive white ones with the stripes and to look really cool. My father said, I don't know, son. You know, I don't know. If we, we, we shouldn't be investing that much money in your shoes. You may not be wearing them that long. <laughs> All right? And I felt kind of bad. But you know what the important thing was? The important thing was, my father was with me, and he took me to get those shoes. And he was at every game I ever played. I was not. I was not very good. I was not a very good football player when I started out. But I had my family support. I wanted to be as cool as my oldest brother, Dr. Brian Swan, who is here. And I wanted to be as gifted as my brother Calvin but I didn't possess their abilities or talents at that age to really move forward. But there were people who helped along the way, like Gene Robinson at College Park Junior High School. You know, there was my coach, Jesse Freitas, at Sarah High School, Nick Carboni, Frank Nolan in basketball, who instilled in me a confidence and gave me a work ethic that said, you can achieve. You heard Ron Yeri talk about an assistant coach at USC, Marv Goo. Marv Gu helped me to grow up to be a man while I was at USC. He taught me tradition, he taught me spirit. He taught me how to stand on my own two feet and work hard in the face of adversity. And so Marv Gu, I would thank you from the bottom of my heart for that time. My receiver coach, Willie Brown, gave me the confidence my senior year to go out and achieve because I did not have the dream of being a professional football player. I thought I was going to be something far different than being a professional football player. I was still going to be Mildred and Willie's baby boy, but I was going to work in some other area. But Willie Brown gave me the confidence my senior year that I could be an All-American player and I could move forward. I was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, and you know, coming from California, you know, Dan Rooney called me up on the phone and said, we're thinking about drafting you. I said, fine. I didn't know much about Pittsburgh. Didn't know much. I knew there was some guy, because every time he caught a pass, he was fairly religious, because every time he caught a pass, they called it an immaculate reception. I knew he was, I knew he was Irish because his name was Frank O'Harris. I knew there was a guy named Joe Green. They called him Mean Joe Green. And you know, I was glad he was on my football team. And I knew we were going to a steel town, but I didn't know what that meant. I was determined that I would play football in Pittsburgh and go back to Southern California because I was a California kind of guy. Absolutely through and through. But as the years progressed and I matured, Pittsburgh became home. And I could not have chosen a better place. I could not have chosen a better team to be on. Now, I'm not here because I was that good. I'm here because the people around me made me that good. They made me that good. John Stallworth forced me to work. Going against Jack Ham at practice every day made me work. Watching Franco Harris take the ball, run 40 yards every time he carried the ball, made me work. 
watching Franco Harris's work in the community day in and day out made me work. Understanding what the tradition of, was, of the Rooney family in Pittsburgh, their sense of giving and community, made me work hard at giving and giving back. These were the things that made our football team great, the sacrifice and the commitment. So I can't stand here in Canton, Ohio, wearing this gold jacket, saying, I did this by myself. But you know what? You're not going to get this jacket off me. This is, this is the single greatest honor in my life the single greatest honor of my life. And if this is the greatest hour of my life, then I would tell you at this moment, this is only a half hour. It will be the greatest hour when I can stand and sit in that back row and John Stallworth is wearing a gold jacket making this speech. Jackie Slater talked about confirmation, about confirmation. When you wait on the list for 14 years and you really want to get something bad and you don't go in, you get close, you start thinking about, am I good enough? Did I do enough? Will I ever get there? I found my confirmation and the hearts and the comments of the fans, my family, who always stood behind me and said when I walked down the street in Pittsburgh, don't worry about it, Swanee. You'll get there next year. You're the man. We believe in you. You should be in the Hall of Fame. And the undying support of Myron Cope, when he voted in year after year, trying to get me into the Hall of Fame, to the magnificent work of Ed Bouchette of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and being able to get me into the Hall of Fame, and that undying support. That was my confirmation. That is what told me I deserve to be here in Canton in the Hall of Fame. Your support your unwavering loyalty, and your trust in me that I did the right things when I played football. I want to send out a special message to some friends who could not be here. My best friend in high school who was my freshman roommate, a swimmer who won a bronze medal in the 1972 Olympics in the 400 meter freestyle, Tom McBreen. Tom has been a lifelong friend and wanted to be here, but sustained an injury to his back and he could not be here. But he's been my friend for more than 34 years. And without that kind of friendship, a lot of things do not happen. I wanted Marv Gu to be here. Obviously, the late John McKay, I wish, was still living. My teammates who have passed away, Ray Mansfield and Steve Furness. I wish that they were still here to be a part of this moment. What makes a career, and what I take with me, is certainly a sense of satisfaction of having performed in a big moment. But it's a response and reaction of people who played the game. My happiness and greatest joy in my career and whatever I may have achieved have come from the words of people like Andre Reed, who is sitting here, played for the Buffalo Bills. From Jerry Rice, you know, from the Randy Mosses and Chris Carters, who came up to me at various points in their careers and lives and said, Lynn Swan, you are the man. I wanted to be like you. I wanted to play the game the way you played it. When you have that kind of impact and those caliber players tell you that's what they want to do, then you know in your heart Regardless of whether you stand here or not, you played the very best football a man could possibly play. And you imparted something to the game that was of great value. I stand here proud and humble to be a member of the class of 2001. This is a great moment for me and my family and a greater moment for the people of Pittsburgh. There is for me, no great wisdom that I can give you about this game. I can only tell you that what brought me here was the love of my friends who are sitting here, my extended family from California to Pittsburgh, the, the Hughes, the Gustafsons, the, the Channons, the Lieblers, the Pearlsteins, 
people I have loved who have treated me like family, who have gotten me through my own parents couldn't be there to spend Christmas with, Thanksgiving, and to share hard times and difficult moments. Those are the things that got me through and the faith of the people here. Before I sit down, I'm going to send one shout out to a man who waited even longer than I did to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, a great Pittsburgher who is going to have a great moment on Sunday. Bill Mazeroski is going into the Hall of Fame in baseball, in Cooperstown. And I know, I know it is going to be the greatest weekend sports history for the city of Pittsburgh we have seen in a very long time, but it will not, it will not be the last. It is still more to come. Thank you very much.